तब गुरु परंपरा की जाए को भक्त वृंद की जाए गुरु प्रेम आनंदे हरिबो आज अभी मत ना वेयर्स शिमान गोसंद और ही इन इन द किचन smaller group tonight more guests coming tomorrow any questions tonight yes um yeah, i have a question uh, regarding your view on vedic astrology and jyotish uh, one if you see it um uh, useful for devotees nowadays and then also it's uh commonly seen practice or seen, uh, followed in Krishna lila and how it's you know used there and whether or not it's useful for us as devotees now mhm i always liked the statement made by govinda maharaj uh who was a astrologer um as well as a vaishnava and um his remark was that the only problem with astrology within the circle of the devotees is that the most important planet in their chart is not on their birth chart the most important planet is not on the chart basically is what he said and that's goloka so goloka is not on the chart and goloka is in your life because golokeer premodhan hari naam sankirtan through the vehicle of naam sankirtan narottam thakur sings uh, the wealth of goloka has been exported hmm, into our lives hmm. through the vehicle of sankirtan carried wealth uh, through the medium of sankirtan carried by the vehicle of she guru parampara so krishna is in our lives in the form of his name he's not different in his name and prior to that ingress of krishna nam and bhakti into our lives through sadhu sangha then our uh we we lived within the jurisdiction of karma reaping the fruits of uh, that which we sowed hmm, from a time without beginning and without that intervention of bhakti it would have had no end but once it enters if the force the influence of bhakti into our lives then karma has to with withdraw Hmm? Uh, it said that um and astrology governs the the karma hmm? karmic influence it said that uh, that bhakti and bhagavatam says bhakti has the power well it says it in a way that's been uh, interpreted to um say and accurately so that bhakti has the power to remove the prabhu karma <clears> oh <throat> but this vapa choto gariyan yet ji bhagre bhartate namatu yam verses like this and what's the other one shravanad shravananu kirtanat yet smaranad drops shravanad yet pravanad shravanad sadopi sadya savana ekalpate yeah that these are both verses about, verses about bhakti and and about anam also in its efficacy and um they're cited by rupa goswami in bhakti rasamrita sindhu in the first chapter where he's speaking about the power of bhakti uttam bhakti the characteristic of uttam bhakti um as it manifests in sadhana um kleshagni it has the uh, power to remove the the kleshas which the root of which is ignorance hmm? and klesha is thought to mean suffering here suffering means asmita ahankar 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's what five, six of them. Um, mm-hmm. Attachment, envy, a egocentric perspective, and all these are, arise out of ignorance, and suffering, of course, is 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 in the mind. These are all mental conditions. So, talking then, describing, talking about um, the implications of karma rooted as it is in ignorance. Uh, Rupa Goswami describes stages of karma from parabdha to, from aparabdha to parabdha, from unmanifest to, to manifest, and going through the stage kuta, bija, and so on. So the uh, the statement of the Bhagavatam is that sadyopi, sad, sadyopi, sadyopi, sadyo means right away. Okay? Sadyopi. That very as soon as one chants the holy name, the implication is he or she is qualified to perform the Vedic uh, sacrifices, which is the karma of the Brahmins. So in the Varnashram society, everyone has their duties, responsibilities, and the religious duties are uh, performed, presided over by the Brahmins. Hmm? They are the priests of the other um, classes. And so unless you have the karma hmm, of a priest, then that's not going to be your dharma. And the verse says that if you're born in an outcast family, uh, or by the Bhagavatam, seventh canto standards of the Gita, fourth chapter, um, if you don't have the qualities of a Brahmin, hmm? because it's not entirely dependent upon birth, although typically you'll have a birth that corresponds with uh, the qualities that you have, but there are exceptions. And so when, when, when exception occurs, then we, we don't, we default to the to the qualities hmm. rather than the birth when they correspond then you make sense by birth but they don't always so qualities prevail so anyway if you don't have the qualities of a Brahmin then it's not your dharma to function in that way in the religious uh, society of Varnashram but the verse says that if you're born in an outcast family and you chant the holy name, you immediately become qualified. The implication of which is that you that the karma of an outcast, the parabdha karma of an outcast, has been removed sufficiently that now you are in a higher karmic status and therefore qualified to perform Vedic rituals. It doesn't say that all your parabdha will be immediately removed, but it says that a good portion of the parabda will Im- can immediately be uh, dissolved, sent somewhere else, as we have talked about it at other times, um, um, in thereby enabling one to perform the Vedic rituals. <clears throat> and when that takes place, of course, the devotee is not interested in performing the Vedic rituals. So he or she typically doesn't do that anyway. They're doing they're doing bhakti, but it means that uh, their position is um, exalted in the society. They have adhikar for bhakti, um, and uh, of course they can do archan, deity worship, which is an anga of bhakti. Um, um, and in the meantime. Of course, this, uh, this uprubbed karma, this karma that's not yet manifest, that's being dissolved. As we go on with our bhakti, the bhakti is dissolving this uprubbed karma so that it doesn't manifest. A good amount of the prabd karma has been arrested. Hmm? But the power of prabd karma is, is considerable. And therefore, the idea that bhakti can transmute it or uh, dispel it and so forth is a controversial one for people who don't know the scriptures that well, like the Ghanis. 
<laughs> who won't only study the scriptures. Let's see the position of our Goswamis. Uh, they've nana shastra vichara naikani puno sad dharma sam stapako lokanam mita karano trimuvane Srinivas uh, Acharya glorifies them in this way that they have their comprehensive knowledge of the, the scriptures. They brought it all together and compiled, composed their own bhakti shastras out of a compassionate heart for the people of the world. <clears throat> and so they're really doing what 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 Vyasa intended to do or was, was instructed to do by Narada in his final work, the Srimad Bhagavatam, make it presented in no uncertain terms what is the position of bhakti and they're taking that to another another level if you will with their own texts and, and commentaries and so forth but it's a it's a powerful statement as to the efficacy of bhakti because gyan unto itself being sattvic does not have the power to uh, destroy or transmute, whatever, the uh, Prabhda Karma. It can deal with the Aparabdha Karma. So the point being here that the Aparabdha Karma is much easier to deal with than the Prabhda Karma. So we're left with some Prabhda Karma, it would appear. And I've given an example before that uh, uh, your Prabhda Karma includes who your mother and father are. So by chanting Hare Krishna, once, you don't change that, or twice. But as you chant, and you advance in bhakti, and you come to graduate from sadhana bhakti, and enter into bhava bhakti, then you get a new set of parents. Right? And, and in the Brajalila, a new identity, and so forth. So, so in your own thinking, in your own, you, you don't have those parents anymore. Of course, if your parents are devotees, they can come with you. And they'll be there as well in different, in different ways. But uh, you have the new set of parents. Nanda and Yashoda, the basic paradigmatic you know, figures, or really for us more, Rishabhanu and Kirtida and the extended relatives in the family of Ranarani, the Banus, the brothers of... Um, Rishabhanu, all last Sakis, Dwarasagopals, all coming from that side. Hmm. So, um, that means to say that in Baba Bhakti, the Parabdha Karma is, is completely eradicated, and one's moving now no longer under the influence of any karma. What will astrological, <coughs> astrological chart have? Uh, he's he's the Golok is is prominent in the in the chart, very prominent now. But it's there also in the beginning hmm, for the sadaka. It's not that bhakti only is this rup shakti, not that bhakti only comes in bhava bhakti, but really in a, it's it's substantial there to the point that one is living under the influence of the sarup shakti rather than a mixture of living under the influence of the sarup shakti and under the influence of the remaining residue of karma. So it said the karma is destroyed immediately. Jiva Goswami gives an example. Just like if you want to th- make a garland out of uh, flower petals, then you take the needle, you take a bunch of flower petals, you take the needle and go through them all at once, right? Just once. But if you look closely, the needle has to go through each one, one by one by one by one by one. So... Once you take the bhakti, karma is eradicated. Still, each little piece is being, the and the opera is going gradually. So there's a gradual uh, removal of the karma. Hmm? Um, but Krishna's in our life, and so he's, bhakti, bhakti has brought Krishna into our life, and so the karma is being dealt with. Um, you, you, if you go to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he's very um, heavy on the bhakti side. Only to the point of, um, what's the term? Um, you know, like, it's like 
uh, surrender to Jesus and all you have to do is say, I love Jesus and antinomianism. Vishwana uh, Chakravatakar is like his his emphasis on bhakti brings up antinomian kind of sensibilities. Uh, an example of the antinomian is just like I say, the Christians like uh, you don't need to follow the commandments. Just uh, say uh, I love Jesus, and that's it. You're saved. Hmm. You don't have to do anything else. And uh, so Vishnu many comments in his Bhagavatam are like this very strong, heavy, heavy emphasis, emphasis on the efficacy of bhakti. The famous verse of the of Brahma's Tante Nukam Bab Susanikshamanam Bujani Vatmakritam Vipakam Hridvag Bapu Viridam Namaste Jeveta Yumukti Pade Sadaya Bhak. Snatan says we go on tolerating one who goes on tolerating the implications of his karmic Life, goods and bads, and staying steady in his, his bhakti reaps the fruits of becoming the heir to uh, the kingdom of God, attaining the lotus feet, uh, mukti pade, mukti at the feet of Krishna. In Vaikuntha or in Goloka, and he goes on. Vishwana says, of course, this verse has nothing to do with one's karma because devotees have no karma. That's mm. <laughs> the same. <laughs> The chanting karma is a small thing; it's immediately dispersed. So they, but Krishna deals with them like a like a father, sometimes chastising them, sometimes patting them on the head and praising them, and they take everything that happens to them in in, in that way. Krishna's I'm in Krishna's hands; he's dealing with me like this. He's giving me difficulty. That's his mercy. He's been very merc- making it easy for me. That's his mercy, and he goes on with this attitude and this. This person attains the the, the the ideal, something like that. So there's some differences there, um, and, and there's really a difference of emphasis. Vishwanath Chakravarti really, really wants to emphasize the efficacy of bhakti. You have to sometimes come back with statements of Sanatana and Jiva Goswami to bring in balance, so you don't get these really out of balance perspectives that some people may come up with, like. I just chant. I chanted once. Everything's fine, you know, <laughs> something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it would appear that, uh, with uh, still with deference to Vishwanath Chakti Thakur, there's still some karma in the lives of um, most of the sadhakas, and that influence is there. I mean, he does also say in other places that the sadhaka day is a work in progress, wherein we are sometimes engaged with our senses in relation to sense objects for our own pleasure, with our own idea of who we are, without thinking, I am so-and-so, we're acting as if I am such-and-such, rather than contact with the sense objects through our senses for the pleasure of Krishna, Mm -hmm. and living in an identity that corresponds uh, with, with, with such a perspective everything for the, for the pleasure of Krishna. So the sadhaka day of being a work in progress means sometimes under the material influence. Now, you, you might not say that that's resulting in any karma, but anyway, at any rate, um, the point is, uh, in, a, in a larger sense, that Goloka Vrindavan, this planet is in our lives so the chart doesn't include that, and whether you have some karma, it's not all the karma you were supposed to get, and and so on. Now there are astrologers who say well, we can see the influence of Vaishnavism in his chart, mm-hmm. or Shaivism, and so on and so forth. But still, it's uh, 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 karma is like math. It's like mechanical. You did this, you get that. The classic kind of example to uh, bring it home is that Yamaraj has... Uh, who's his scribe? Is it Chitragupta is his scribe. So to put it in modern terminology, uh, Yamaraj's... Uh, data entry 
employee is Chitragupta, and he is entering the data of everybody's thoughts, actions, interactions of all living beings. He's pretty good at the job there. And uh, and then when it's time, Yamar says, can you give me the printout on so-and-so? And there it is. Okay, and okay, this is, translate this. He reads at the chart, he says, this means... Again, become a mouse, or you know, whatever it is. So, so this is the idea. <laughs> so, um, we 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 look at the Bhagavatam in the sixth canto. What happened? The Yamadutas were sent. In other words, the computation had been made. Hmm? The Yamadutas were sent. Pick up that guy Ajamil and bring him the hell down here. Hmm? <laughs> and so the Yamadutas went and. And what happened is they met with the Vishnu Dutas, the emissaries of Vishnu, and and they were told, you have no jurisdiction here because he has chanted the name of Narayan, Om Narayan, Bhagavan Chi Narayan Ki Jai. Hmm? And this was like a new religious idea. This is another example, of course, of how the Bhagavatam and, and in Uttam Bhakti mm-hmm. is the Parodharma. And it steps, if you will, on the head of the Varnashram Dharma and its sensibilities and jurisdiction. In other words, the Yamadutas were uh, uh, carrying on uh, as uh, dutas, messengers, within the system of the Varnashram. And they met with the Vishnu Dutas who were outside of that system. They had never encountered them before as the story. And so they they weren't sure about but they backed off because they were quite beautiful and and powerful. And they went to Yamar and said, Oh, them, yes, right, that's a different thing. We have no jurisdiction there. Hmm? The name of God is in in his life. He chanted at the end oh, he chanted. And that wasn't recorded? <laughs> that's that's off their chart, so right? so so a new a new chart, right? And uh, under a new uh, jurisdiction, and the messengers, the dutas of Vishnu, generous, kind, compassionate, and they gave instruction to Ajamil. And he went to Haridwar. His his death was postponed. He went to Haridwar, got an extension, and there in Haridwar he became a sadhu, perfected the chanting, and his spiritual practice went to Vaikuntha. Ajamil Kijai. Shihari Nam Prabhu Kijai. So, um, as much as Krishna Bhakti is in our life, Prabhupada said, with regard to palmistry, which is a related science, like astrology, a physiognomy, it's thought that, that you can, that, to put it simply, the, the index, the face is the index of the mind, there's a saying. Hmm? Um, and so the lines on the hand can be read, the lines on the face can be read, and so forth. You can meet people in, in Delhi. In New De- I met him in New Delhi. And, uh, yeah, hey, come, come, come. Take your hand like this. <laughs> Read it, tell you about your past, everything. And ask for five rupees, fifty rupees. Now they ask for a hundred, probably. <laughs> but they they, 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 they blow your mind. They tell you everything about yourself. Well, a lot of, a lot of things. You did this, you're familiar, you're there. And, right? and, hmm. That doesn't mean they could it's easy well I'll tell you one thing about palmistry and also about astrology it's easier to tell what's already passed than to tell the present especially with astrology <laughs> there's many astro- astrologers who can tell you why they got it wrong ah oh, I didn't see that part and therefore this guy got elected instead of that guy and uh, and that's why your investment you know in, uh, but anyway but otherwise, besides that, it's easier for the, for some reason for them to tell the past by reading the poem than it is to tell the future. 
The past has been done. The future is still. There's an element of will. Things could change. It might go like this, but it doesn't have to. So, at any rate, with regard to palmistry, when asked about it, Prabhupada said, oh, we just go like this. Clap three times, and all the lines on your hand change. <laughs> this way of saying, by Nam Kirtan, your destiny is, your karmic destiny is, is changed. Hmm. There may be some skeleton of it, semblance of it that continues, and we may be troubled also by some measure of our Prabhu Karma that we're, we're not advanced enough to even absorb ourselves enough in sadhana to get, to, to, to be very, for it to be very, to be able to change it very much. But it's, uh, we, should, we should go on patiently, as Bhagavatam said in the verse I cited, chanting and hearing and serving, and it's a good life. Hmm. Anyway, and much of the results also will come in the future hmm, of your bhakti. So, at any rate, what is the value then of astrology? Um, and as I'm speaking about it, not too much, right? There's another factor that is important as well, and that is the um, uh, astrology is one thing, astrologers are often another. Mm-hmm. So, and then you can get uh, two astrologers who predict uh, completely opposite things, like the world, like elections, where there were astrologers saying this one would win, astrologers saying that one would win, this is why, and so forth. And of course, one of them was wrong, right? Um, so, uh, I think there's a statement somewhere that in Kali Yuga, the problem with astrology is the astrologers. That it's actually, it's time of peaking and being a, a, a science, which would be called in our times, be called, what would they call it, proto-science or pseudo-science. Hmm. Um, um, but it's it's predictive power and so forth and was um, uh, greater in I don't know the previous yuga or something like that. I remember hearing that at 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 at, at some point. Um, Kali yuga's got a lot of a lot of problems. Um, so, um, but I mean, do the do the point do the stars influence our lives? They sure do. Right? Because the, the sun's a star. Does it influence your life? It reflects light on the moon. Does that influence your life? Does that change your moods? Does that make you feel romantic or depressed if it doesn't come out or whatever? Hmm? So, uh, <laughs> so there's an obvious influence that the stellar situation has upon us in the way I'm talking about it. And of course, um, astrology speaks about it in a more subtle way. There's a beautiful and powerful uh, book that I read here in Madhavan a few years ago. It's called, what's it called? Cosmic? Psyche and Cosmos. Written by the author of The Passion of the Western Mind. It's a fascinating book uh, for an uneducated person like myself to go through the whole development of philosophical thought in Western uh, culture. Really like a novel. So really, really good uh, author. And so he wrote this other book, Psyche and the Cosmos. And um, it's a really good book, too. Um, I read the first hundred pages, which is similar to the passion of the Western mind, going through Western civilizations, thinking developments, and so forth. Had some parallels with that book. And it's all building up to the idea that that there's more to life than what meets the eye and the mind, as I often say. Hmm. And um, and uh, and and when he really makes his case for that, then he turns to astrology as an example of to illustrate the idea that there's there's intelligence to the world, hmm. purpose, meaning, so forth. 
um, you know, a modern person drawing from tradition. Modernism is basically get rid of tradition. And so, um, uh, what he he didn't deal with the predictive astrology of Vedic or Western. But there's another form of astrology called what did he call it? Um, archetypal, archetypal, archetypal astrology. And it and and he went through and he showed. I didn't get into the astrology part much, but it, what he did basically was he showed how world events correspond with these archetypal. Uh, I don't even know how to explain what he was saying, but uh, and it was very, very powerful and compelling um, way using astrology to uh, make a case for the fact that there is intelligence to the world. Mm-hmm. A universal mind or God, however you want to speak about it. Mm. Very well educated person, and, um, and of course it'll be dismissed as as, as pseudoscience and so forth by, by um, materialists and whatnot. I saw a uh, YouTube video of a God brother of mine. I think I've told this before, but I'll repeat it who's an astrologer, and he was invited onto a show by a fellow named Michael Shermer, who's a famous skeptic. And I guess he has a show, I don't know if it's still playing, but, you know, bring on your pseudoscience and your spirituality and we'll debunk it right on the show. So he was going to debunk um, astrology. So they had like six people, and he did the charts of the people, and uh, they were going, wow, you know, that's really accurate, and this and that, you know, and and it's, and, and, and uh, he seemed to be doing a good job. And so, what Shermer did was he took two people then, and he gave, uh, exchanged their charts. So, like Mary and Sue, and when the devotee got the chart of Sue, it was actually Mary's chart. And when he got Mary's chart, it was actually Sue's chart. So um, he was expecting him to read the charts, and then they'd say, oh, that kind of sounds like me, you know? And so when he read Sue's chart, she said, nope, nope, sorry, uh uh-uh, nope, nope. And they did separately when they read Mary's chart, nope, no, no. And so that was, like, bad enough for Shermer. Hmm? (laughs) And then... They cross it back over, and they said, "Yeah, that's me. That's right." That's right. Uh, so he was pretty upset with the show. My God, really told me, <laughs> the Shermer. Hmm. But uh, he did a good, good job <laughs> on there. Um, so I guess he's a pretty good astrologer. But there, there is a shortage of them um, in the world today. So uh, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in the uh, uh, astrologers or in um, primarily in astrologers, let's say in astrologers and in their ability to read a chart. In previous times, okay, to go back, um, and I'm remembering a little bit about um, what I had heard. Of course, you you find the example in Chaitanya Charitamrita where the astrologer goes into meditation. He looks at the chart and he goes into meditation. Then he comes out having read Chaitanya's Mahaprabhu's chart, and says, you're the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> you're Swayam Bhagavan. And Mahaprabhu says, no, I was a, a cowherd boy in my previous life, and, and I took care of cows, and therefore this, this life I'm born as a Brahmin. You astrologers are crazy. <laughs> Kali Yuga, get out of here. <laughs> so... <laughs> So the point is that they were they were mystics and Brahmins. This was a Brahminical type of engagement, educational type of. So they were high quality Brahmins, very religious and uh, refined people, power to meditate, some mystical abilities and so forth to read and and so it's it's not just like learn a chart, get a computer, you know, uh, <laughs> type it in, read a few books and. Now I've become an astrologer. Not like the, the, you can do that, but you're not going to be the kind of astrologer 
that um, um, it's talked about in, in in the Vedic past, if you will, where marriages were based on astrology and uh, astrological considerations and other things, and um, and so forth. Of course, it's very prominent in the Leela, in the Krishna Leela, Gargacharya. There's the example. He was the astro- astrologer, Gargamuni, the priest of the whole, the, like Yadu dynasty, called in to do the charts of Krishna and Balaram. And of course, it was shown in Krishna's chart that at a young age he's going to leave home for a long time. So, therefore, he's told Purnamasi, he can't marry any of the girls here because he's going to be gone. So, this is for now. So, so his chart makes room for the parakya, of course. So, in Krishna Lila, all these things are to be taken seriously. Now, we are cultivating the idea of entering into Krishna Lila, so we can look at them in light of that, and, and so on and so forth. And sometimes, excuse me, great devotees in our era, in our time, did take uh, astrological uh, considerations, some of them, in, in in, in, uh, seriously, Prabhupada would was in an astrological thing. Never start a trip on a in the afternoon on a Thursday or something like that. So he would always wait, and then we'd go Friday morning. I forget exactly what it was, something like that. Or he would put all this stuff outside the door ahead of time, as if the trip had started earlier. And, <laughs> There's a what's it called? There's a term for it. I think it is on Thursdays. Superstition. Not superstition. Yeah, it's superstition. You could say it's. But there's a there's a term for it within astrology. But I forget for that for the Thursday thing. Sridhar observed it too, and the reason that Prabhupada and Sridhar Maharaj observed it is because Bhakti Siddhanta observed it. And he was a great astrologer. Yeah. Hmm? So they just uh, followed his example in that regard. Of course, Prabhupada also told us that he had his chart done, which was standard, in a time when he was young, and it was said that, that he will open 108 temples and build a house big enough that the whole world can live within. And, of course, we saw that that came true. So, pretty good astrologer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but overall, we don't put a lot of credence in it for the reasons I've mentioned, uh, the influence of Krishna in our lives and and the uh, lack of good astrologers. Does that help? Anything else on that? As far as the Prabhupada um, Karma... The, the Prabhupada Karma? Yeah. I have a problem with it, but in terms of my ideal as a cho- or that's chosen me, but it doesn't seem to be universal to bhakti. It's actually seems to, it seems to be about Krishna bhakti and, and Prajapati bhakti at that. It's in the example of the parents. So some, well, I don't understand. You said that bhakti eradicates the prada of the karma, yeah, which can be expressed, which have you know, parents are a form of. But if you're a bhakti in general and not a Krishna bhakti with Prajapati as an ideal, like say, you know, like Kunta bhakti or something, yeah. then they don't have parents. For example, yeah. <laughs> they don't have parents, but they can do away with the parents that they have. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Well, then it just, be, it's just, um, refers to the consciousness of the practitioner, the state of life. Krishna consciousness, it's called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Braj Bhakti, Rag Bhakti is more powerful than Vaidhi Bhakti also. Hmm. I think that uh, that said, um, I just kind of say that it's kind of a cute way of talking about it. But I think that um, another way that to think about the statement of the Bhagavatam is that um, um, it removes 
Sanat and Goswami has written about it, I think in Hari Bhakti Vilas, that the, the bad karma, a certain amount of bad karma is removed, parabda, immediately, and the good karma remains and then gradually is diminished. Um, and and parabda karma is it's parabda karma is also parabda karma that's going to happen in this life. Right? In other words, there's parabda karma now, it's happening right now, but there's parabda karma that is going to happen in this life. So it's also parabda. Hmm? And aparabda karma refers to the karma that's not going to happen in this life, I would say. So by, by bhakti you can, you may have the same parents, for example, you know, but of course you don't identify with it, as we're saying that's another thing, but but uh, also what parabda karma would have manifest, that could be eradicated. You can, you can look at it like that and say, well, yeah, you're not going to change who your parents are, but that happened before you became a devotee. Hmm. It's already a past thing. Anyway, anyway, something like that. That helped. What else? What's the time? Yes. Maharaj, this is about um, preaching. Like you said, you would emphasize that kirtan is very powerful anga of mukti, uh, most powerful in Tari Yuga. And the dynamic idea of kirtan in our bhakti of Tari Yuga. So uh, I myself find that when I share what I have heard from you, from other devotees, or read from the scriptures, when I share it with other devotees, other people, I find it more rewarding for myself. But as you also say that this preaching is should be done in the mood of compassion. You cite Bhagavatam, Karunaya Purana Guru Shukadeva Goswami spoke Bhagavatam for compa- out of compassion. But in my stage I don't have the compassion, but I want to share it with other I feel that it is a good thing, I should do it. So but it will not be effective in the same way as the uh, Uttam Bhagavad uh, preaches, of course. But. So how to have compassion when I don't have compassion? I want to preach somehow. As you advance, then you become more self-satisfied and and you know that it's really n- not something that you've earned because the experience outweighs whatever you think you could have done to warrant it. Hmm? And so, as you become filled up like that, then you naturally feel like, I have been blessed. And so, if I make, I make a little effort to bless somebody else, that would be so good for them. Hmm? That would be so such a um, I remember when I was young and I was distributing books in the Los Angeles airport we were in disguise and so forth and I was just so in a trance that I and thinking how how fortunate I am if I and I just make a little effort to reach out to these people and give them a book so it's kind of an overflow I mean what can I say uh, he, he, so as you become more self-satisfied and then naturally, it's just a natural feeling. It's not like, how can I, I don't know how you could practice loving, you know, someone says, Mom, how do you love? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, but um, imitation of a good thing is a good thing. So it's said sometimes, so going through the practices, and there are good reasons. You're doing for your own purification. Hmm? So charity begins at home. Hmm? So be kind to yourself. You know that if I if I share what I've heard, it solidifies what I've heard, hmm? and it kind of causes me want to hear more and and so on. So 
there may be a less than fully compassionate motive, even a selfish motive, but that that's trying to be compassionate to yourself. You haven't, you haven't become received enough self-compassion to be compassionate to others. So charity begins at home. So be kind to yourself and do good for others. In other words, the way to be good for you, one of the ways to be good to your, kind to yourself is to do good for others. Mm-hmm. And you've experienced that. Because it is good for them if you share it with them. And you found it's good for you, too. Mm-hmm. So as it grows within, then it... Uh, it uh, it's not uh, thought of perhaps in the same way from my own purification because I'm pure. So mm. it's just kind of overflowing, something like that. Mm. But now, what you're doing, and someone's like Sukadev speaking the Purana out of compassion, are related, and one being a developmental stage of the other. We take that then in contrast to somebody who's speaking the Bhagavatam um, to make a living, uh, you know, to to uh, which doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but I mean it could be a bad thing, um, and or just to increase their prestige in the community, and people think I'm important because I'm speaking the Bhagavatam, and so then they're going to give me donations. And this uh, and this kind of thing, famous story of Gorkashore, Das Babaji, when a famous Bhagwat reciter set up his uh, pandal near, right next door to where Babaji Maharaj was living, and many people came to hear him recite the Bhagavatam because there's these guys they can memorize the whole Bhagavatam, memorize the whole Ramayana. Hmm? It's an incredible ability that they have. And then they speak for hours and hours, go through seven days, go through like a synopsis of the Bhagavatam, and very, very powerful storytellers, and um, and so on. Um, so he set up next to Gorga Shordas Babaji, and uh, after it was, uh, but Babaji Maharaj didn't attend. But the reason that he set up next to Gorga Shordas Babaji's place was because he was thinking as Babaji revealed later, that if if Babaji Marsh came to his talk, then he would be able to say, even Gorkashore comes to my Bhagavad discourses. Hmm? So, after the Pandal program was finished, then Babaji Marsh asked an assistant, can you go and clean that place over there? And so the, the assistant said, Babaji Marsh, how can I clean the place? The Bhagavatam has been spoken there for seven days. And Babaji Maharaj said, you heard Bhagavatam? I only heard rupee, rupee, rupee. That's why I stayed away. So that's the wrong kind of motive. And sometimes we contrast the compassionate motive out of fullness, out of a sense of giving, with that to make clear the difference, but there's some in-between. It, it's not even in-between. It's, it's, it's not yeah. the one. It's a, it's a prior stage to the fullness of the compassionate heart of a, of a superlative Vaishnav. Panchakalpaturubhyascha kripasindubhibhacha patitanam pavanebhi vaishnavi bunamona maha anantakuri vaishnavindaki jaya Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi, Dauji Gopal Ki Jai, Gaudi Vaishnav Guru Parampara Ki Jai, Gaur Nityananda Ki Jai, Gaur Adamadava Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi.